What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here coming at you from Alapura, Kerala, India on my houseboat. We just spent the past day on this beautiful three bedroom houseboat in the backwaters. Look how gorgeous the scenery is. Today what I wanna do is I wanna talk to you about what it takes to come out here, how much it costs, different sizes of boats, activities, and the whole experience. Now here's everything you need to know about running a houseboat in Alapura. One of the best places in Kerala to experience the Kerala backwaters is the city of Alapi. Alapi serves as a gateway to the most famous stretch of the backwaters, which is located in the Kutanad region of India's Malabar coast. It consists of a complex network of interconnected lakes, rivers, lagoons, and canals, which the Portuguese used to transport spices from the Idiki district to the Indian Ocean in the 16th century. The Portuguese spice boats are long gone, and in their place are over 800 houseboats, which are the key ingredient that have made the Kerala backwaters a tourist hotspot. But what exactly is a houseboat? A houseboat is basically a modified Ketuvalam boat, which locals have used for years to transport rice from their paddy fields to the market towns. The modified boats are essentially 80 foot long, floating Airbnbs, which tourists can rent out to get a one of a kind backwater experience. Houseboats can range in size and quality. So I highly recommend doing extensive research before you book a stay. Some are small and only have one or two bedrooms, while some of the largest can have five to six bedrooms. But we'll talk more about what to expect on board a little later. Consider your options and choose the best one that suits your needs and your budget. I stayed on a three bedroom luxury houseboat called the Cruise Land Houseboat. You can book with them through their website, which I have linked in the description below. If you wanna book a different houseboat, you can find other great options on airbnb.com and booking.com. For a 24 hour stay on the Cruise Land Houseboat, you'll pay 30,000 rupees or the equivalent of 393 US dollars. If you think the price sounds steep, keep in mind that it covers your lodging, food, activities, and the boat staff for the entire time you're on board. So in my opinion, it's worth it. Remember, travel is the one thing we buy that makes us richer. Before you book a houseboat experience, there are some things you need to know. Check-in on most houseboats is at noon, so be sure to arrange your travel schedule so that you'll be at the port in Alapi well before then. Also, know that the backwaters can be congested with houseboats, especially during high season in January and in February. That wasn't my personal experience, but it's something to consider if you don't want to feel like you're on the water with a bunch of other tourists. Also, even though many houseboats are spacious, I don't recommend bringing large pieces of luggage on board unless you're staying multiple nights, as lugging huge bags on and off the boat will be a pain. Inside your houseboat, it feels like a nice Airbnb, especially the more luxurious houseboats. My houseboat had a cozy living room, which also served as a dining room at mealtimes. There were also three identical bedrooms, each of which has its own attached bathroom with toilet, sink, and a shower. There's a communal sink where you can wash your hands before meals down the hall, which leads to a kitchen and an outdoor balcony where you can enjoy the view. Don't expect to cruise the backwaters all day and night. Local river regulations state that the houseboat engines must be turned off after 6 p.m. So at that time, your captain will dock the boat for the night. The engines aren't allowed to turn back on until 8.30 a.m. the next morning. It's the perfect time to kick back, relax, enjoy a meal, and get to know the crew. Speaking of meals, let's talk about the food you'll eat during your houseboat stay. It will likely consist of a flavorful veg and non-veg Southern Indian food brought from the local markets. Just minutes after I boarded, the friendly staff greeted me with a fresh coconut and a plate of cold and refreshing coconut meat that was so good, I ate it standing up. It's just the first taste of the incredible hospitality you'll experience during your stay. Your first Southern Indian feast will come at lunchtime, not long after you board. My lunch included rice, a tasty fried river fish, a tasty but bony chicken curry, a fresh and crunchy cabbage salad with shaved coconut and green chilies, long beans with carrots, papadum, lemon pickle, kingfish, sambar, and much more. After the meal, I enjoyed a traditional sweet porridge called payasam, which can contain rice, raisins, vermicelli noodles, tapioca, sweet corn, and even broken wheat. It's a flavorful packed way to begin your backwater adventure. But that's not all you'll eat on your first afternoon on the canals and rivers outside of Alapi. Your host will make sure your belly stays full with a tasty mid to late afternoon snack. It included two of my favorite things in India, banana fry, and ginger chai. The chai is milky and sweet with a nice amount of spice from the ginger, while the banana fry is golden, doughy, and very similar to maduro. I also had an incredible banana flavored fried bread, which also contained cumin. It was both sweet and savory and was the perfect complement to the milky chai. Dip your bread into the chai for a true flavorful explosion in your mouth. 
it will have your taste buds craving more. Before your dinner, you might want to try a local specialty in Kerala, a type of fermented coconut wine called Doldi. It doesn't contain much alcohol, so you won't really get much of a buzz from it but it can be very sour depending on how long it's aged. If you want a less sour toli, try to get it as fresh as possible. Dinner on board will likely consist of fresh seafood, meat and veg that the houseboat staff will buy from the local market during the afternoon. For us, that meant fried tiger prawns marinated in garlic, ginger, garam masala, black pepper and green chili paste. Along with that, you can also enjoy pearl fish, rice soup, dried fish, potatoes with chilies, cabbage salad, chicken curry, a light butter doll, and a spicy green chili chutney. Everything was perfectly cooked and had my mouth watering long before I tasted it. The prawns were incredible and are so well made that you can eat them with the shell on. I also love the crunchy dried fish, the potatoes with chilies, and the cabbage salad which left a tingle of spice on my tongue and in the back of my throat. The following morning, you'll be served breakfast which you can eat before you head back to port if you booked a 24 hour excursion. My breakfast consisted of some of the tastiest Kerala style dosas, which are smaller than the other ones I've tasted in states like Karnataka and Telangana. They came with a tasty ginger coconut chutney, tomatoes and veg soup called sambar, and a delicious omelet with chilies. While the meal times are certainly epic, they're not the only fun thing to experience when you book a stay on a houseboat. You'll also get to travel the backwaters and explore the sites and towns along the waterways. Like Arumedi Kuntan Temple in the village of Kuramadi, this tiny white stupa is famous because of the unique Buddha statue inside, which was made sometime between the 9th and 14th centuries. It's made of black granite and has been sawed almost in half. Another great site to experience is the St. Mary's Basilica in the town of Chumapakulam. This Christian basilica was constructed in the year 427 AD, making it one of India's oldest churches at over 1500 years old. Inside, you can see the beautiful frescoes depicting Jesus Christ, Mary, and other biblical figures. You'll also find a stunning carving of the Last Supper on its walls, as well as an ancient cross with a smaller cross and Malerum script carved into the base. The fresh seafood you eat at mealtimes will come from one of two places, canal side convenience stores or the canals themselves. At the Potava Fish Market and Manju Dynamic Cool Bar, you can find everything from snapper to fresh crabs to prawn on ice as well as basic toiletries like toothpaste and toothbrushes. If you don't have a super busy schedule like I did, you can try your hand at fishing for your dinner or you can leave it up to the professionals who will cast their nets and haul in their catch for you. One of the greatest experiences you can enjoy while staying on a houseboat is going on a canal ride at sunrise or sunset. I love seeing the sunrise after I wake up, so I recommend waking up and heading out on your canoe before dawn so you can watch the rising sun put up an amazing show in the skies over the backwaters. The oranges, pinks, reds, and purples will color the sky for several minutes before the golden and early morning light takes over and creates one of the most breathtaking sights you can see on the waters. It's absolutely beautiful. While you enjoy your canoe ride, be sure to take in the buildings on either side of the canals. You can see traditional two-story homes as well as large modern homes and more churches. If you visit the Kerala backwaters in the autumn, you can even watch a boat race that takes place on the Menapali Kayala Lake. As your houseboat experience comes to an end, you'll return to the port in Alapi much richer and more fulfilled and for a deeper appreciation for the beauty of the backwaters and its people. It's an experience I urge everyone to have at least once and it will change your life forever. So I hope this video taught you everything you need to know about renting a houseboat in Alapura and I hope next time you visit India, you come out here and rent a houseboat, enjoy your time, relax, have fun. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in India.